With the rise of the Chicago stockyards and the world's largest meatpacking industry, farmers and merchants began selling futures contracts, which called for the delivery of a specific commodity at a future date and agreed upon price. As soon as these forward contracts, as they became known, became an accepted practice, they could be bought and sold many times before delivery to the ultimate holder of the contract. This provided a way for those who wished to speculate on commodity prices to profit by buying contracts at a low price and selling them at a higher price. Some went bust, others hit it big. Either way, it was American capitalism at its bare-knuckled best, and it continued to evolve over time. Contract trading was first conducted in public squares and street corners until the Chicago Board of Trade was organized in 1848. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange traces its roots to the 1870s when it became a market for eggs and butter. The two markets merged in 2007, and today the CME Group is the largest futures exchange in the world, handling billions of transactions each year. Chicago's Mike Connor began commodities trading in the 1970s, and he's seen his share of changes. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange is an outgrowth of the uh, butter and egg business on uh, the west side of the loop, uh, where all the uh, wholesale grocery operations are. And what, what actually probably happened in Chicago when they had the great fire in uh, 1871, uh, Chicago was a hub that was a hub for uh, uh, cattle slaughter, it was a hub for ho hog butcher to the world. The fire came, destroyed the city, uh, the railroad tracks survived, Chicago s survived, and the uh, butter and egg business, the hog business, and the uh, Chicago stockyards on the south side are all have to do with, uh, with the development of the exchanges. Trading is conducted two ways. There's the traditional open outcry method, also known as pit trading. And there's the electronic trading method, which is done by traders on computers anywhere in the world. Pit trading involves buyers and sellers calling out orders, prices, and quantities of commodities. Pit traders wear different colored jackets, red, blue, yellow, and green, to indicate their function. Introduced in 1992, the electronic trading platform accounts for the lion's share of a typical day's activity and it's also brought about revolutionary change in the way commodities are traded and the impending end of pit trading. The pits are gone. If you're trading in the pits, it was a game of reacting, not thinking. 1974 to 2012, the industry has changed from blackboards to electronics. It's amazing. And the electronics, uh, I think I read somewhere where the exchange could process like 3,000 trades in a heartbeat. So uh, the capacity is, is much greater, the efficiency is much greater, the cost is, is much less. Even though the futures markets are changing, Connor believes the fundamentals to profitable trading remain the same as they were when commodities trading began more than a century ago. As I look back, back over the 36 years I've been doing this, I think the thing that I like best about the futures business is that it certainly changes every day. It's an opportunity if you, to be your own boss. And there's certainly margin clerks and risk managers that might help you uh, tell you what you can and can't do, but you're on, and this is 100% on your own. This is a thinking man's business. And if you can't think, and if you can't manage your emotions and manage yourself, you're gonna have a terrible time.